Hi friends, this is a Metabones Speed Booster Ultra T 0.71 times, and this is the video I wish I could find when I was researching what the hell one of those is. So yeah, I recently picked up this speed booster for my GH5 and I had to do quite a lot of research online about what a speed booster is, what the best brands are and how a speed booster affects the lenses and the picture, the video that you essentially get when you're using one. I knew that they could make lenses slightly wider and I knew that you would get more light into the camera if you were using a speed booster and I also knew it would allow me to put different mount lenses on my GH5 but finding the detail of actually what that means I found really difficult. So this video is just hopefully a super quick guide to anyone looking into speed boosters to tell you exactly the details which it took me ages to find. And hopefully it'll be really quick and make your life a little bit easier. So I picked up the Metabones EF mount to a Micro Four Thirds T speed booster and this is the ultra so it's 0.71 times magnification. I picked this up second hand it was about 450 pounds they're around 700 pounds new so it's quite a hunk of change you know to part with. So why would you want to do that? There are three main things that speed booster does or rather there's three main things that this speed booster can do for me. So the first thing is the focal range. The speed booster, what it does is it's like a macro tube and if you've ever used a macro tube what that does is it basically gives you more of a zoom but this is like a reverse macro tube so you put this on your lens, you put the lens on your camera and this will essentially make a lens wider than it would be normally. So that's the first thing it does. The second thing that it does is it allows the lens to gather more light and get more light onto the sensor. And this is the main thing, this is why it's called a speed booster, because it speeds up lenses and allows more light into the sensor. The third thing that it does is this particular model, and this isn't the case for all speed boosters, so be aware of that. But the third thing it does for me is it allows me to put EF mount lenses, so Canon native mount lenses, onto a Micro Four Thirds, i.e. my Panasonic GH5 camera, uh, which opens up a whole breadth of new lenses and opportunities for my camera. But this is the bit that I couldn't find, and this is the bit that hopefully is useful. When it says it lets more light in, what does that mean? A lot of the research I found suggested that you'll get an extra stop of light, but a stop is not a finite figure. A stop is half as much or twice as much as the particular setting that you're on. So it didn't, I, it wasn't a real world figure that I could really work with and that I was able to kind of say, well, if I put this lens on, I'll end up with this. So it took me a bit of research. So that's the first thing, how much light will the speed booster extra let in? How will it affect the aperture of a lens that I put on it? Secondly, how will it affect the focal range that I get from a lens? So that one's pretty simple. This is the 0.71 model. There's a 0.61 as well, uh, but this one squashes the image even more. The calculation for this, as an example, I've got this here. This is the Canon 50mm f1.4 prime lens. I love this lens, I've talked about it previously. I used to use this all of the time on my Canon camera. It is a bit soft, but I've I do just really like it and it's just got a lovely bokeh. So I'm really pleased to be able to put this onto my GH5. But what's it gonna look like and how's it gonna behave when it's on the GH5? And that's the bit I just couldn't find. I couldn't find anyone just simply talking about how this will behave when it's on the GH5 through the speed booster. So here is the maths that I found after much research to make your life easier if you're thinking the same thing. I'm gonna open my calculator because I wanna be very precise with my figures that I quote you. 
The Canon is a 50mm lens. So what you do is you take that focal range and you times it by the magnification factor of the speed booster, which is times 0.71. And what that does is that gives us 35 0.5 millimeter. So we've got our 50 mil lens, it's being squeezed through the speed booster and giving us a full frame equivalent of 35.5 millimeters. However, if we're using a micro four thirds camera as I am, then you still need to take that focal range and times that by the crop factor of the sensor you're using. So in my case, I take that 35 0.5 millimeter and I times that by two, which is the crop factor of the micro four thirds sensor. And that gives me a focal range of 71 millimeters. So what would be a 50 mil on a full frame camera. And if I use just a dumb lens adapter and put this straight onto the GH5, it would times two, it would become a hundred millimeter lens. Through the speed booster, this actually becomes a 71. 71 millimeter, just apropos of nothing, is pretty much the same focal range that I would get through this when it was on my old Canon APS-C camera. So, little fact for you there. So yeah, so focal range, 50, the meta bones makes it into a 35.5 and then you times that by two and it gives you the equivalent, a full frame equivalent of 71 millimeter lens, great. The aperture goes through a similar process, but I just couldn't find anyone saying this. So that's why I'm saying it to you now, um, essentially. So with the aperture, you take the 1.4, the f1.4 of the lens, and again, you times that by 0.71, and that gives you an f.9 lens which is mental. Now, when you put it on to the camera, most cameras won't show like decimals of F, so it's likely to round it, and it's it's 0.994 is what the calculator says, um, but when you put it on the camera, it will show as an F1 lens. But again, you still have to take in the crop factor of whatever sensor you're using. So in my case, micro four thirds sensor, I'm gonna times that by two. So that 0.9 uh, aperture becomes a 1.9 full frame equivalent. So when I'm changing the aperture on the camera, it will tell me it's F1, but it's gonna be equivalent to an F1.9 on a full frame camera. So yeah, that's it really. I hope that's helpful. I can't tell you how much research it took me to get to that conclusion. And once I did work that out, once I worked out that my beloved Canon 50mm 1.4 could go through that speed booster and give me a 70mm f1 lens, I was pretty pleased about that. I'm pretty excited. And it is a chunk of change to buy one of these Metabone speed boosters. There are some cheaper alternatives. Um, Viltrox do one and uh, Comlite, another Chinese manufacturer, do, do them. Um, I haven't used either of those, so if either of those companies are watching and want to send me one, I'd be more than happy to review and test and share my thoughts. But it seemed to me like Metabones are the kind of leaders in these adapters. I hope that makes sense. That's everything for today. Um, if you've not, if you're not familiar with uh, speed boosters, um, I suggest you check them out. They're really cool. Uh, I'm really loving it. Uh, the GH5, the smaller sensor of the GH5, one of the things that I've kind of been not struggling with, but maybe missing a little bit is the ability to really stop down and get loads of extra light in and get that really blurry background. So for me, this was a great investment to allow me to kind of get faster lenses onto the camera um, and just to open up the ability to use some of these older lenses, uh, which I love so much from my Canon camera, um, to put them on the GH5 and get some really nice results from them. So that's everything. Thanks for watching and um, I'll see you next time.